It was a long road for Klay Thompson after the 2019 playoffs. A torn ACL took him out of the finals against the Raptors in the entirety of the 2020-21 NBA season. Then, right as it looked like he was about to come back, and when the world needed him most, he vanished. The splash bender tore his right Achilles while working out in Los Angeles. It sidelined him for the entire second year. Then, when he came back partway through the 21-22 season, people said he just wasn't the same. The media said Clay was wasn't Clay anymore, and the injuries had knocked him down too much. It was the first time in his career he shot under 40% from three, and that narrative held on as we went into this current season. But as we approached the final stretch, we must admit we were all wrong. Klay Thompson has been unbelievable this season at the age of 32. The elite shooting guard is averaging his most points per game since the 2016-2017 season at 22.1. He's reignited himself and shown that injuries are a step back, but not a complete stopper. He's still the same old splash brother that can destroy teams without even dribbling. How is he doing this, especially after all these years? Still, no one's been able to crack the case on Klay Thompson, but let's dig into it and at least try. I'm sure we all understand how amazing of a shooter he is. It's no surprise that the man has the most threes made in a single game in NBA history at 14, or that he's also tied for fifth on the list with himself for two games this year. Steph Curry, Kobe Bryant, and uh, Danielle Marsh? Hold on, Danielle Marsh made 12 threes in a game all the way back in 2005? Was he the true shooting trendsetter? No, wait a minute. He was a six foot nine power forward chucking almost six threes a game in 2005. If you learned anything from this video today, I at least just hope that it was this man was way ahead of his time. All right, but back to Clay. Thompson has been able to dismantle teams purely off of his sweet shooting stroke. By his fourth year in the league, he averaged almost 22 points with seven three point attempts per game. The two crucial keys to unlocking his true power have been his incredibly fast releases and his catch and shoot ability. As you watch these highlights of the man, look how fast he gets his shot off. He does get the advantage of playing with someone as talented a passer as Draymond Green, so he gets it right in his shooting pocket and lets it fly. This quick release has allowed him to do impossible things like his 37 point quarter or 60 points in three quarters. If you remember that game, the guy only took 11 dribbles. 11 dribbles for 60 points. That comes out to basically every dribble worth five and a half points. That's insane. I'm not gonna sit here and crunch the numbers on someone else who's scored 60 points like James Harden, but just realize that James frequently exceeds the 400 dribble mark in a game. But Clay doesn't need him. That quick release allows him to catch and fire wherever he is. The Golden State offense has always heavily emphasized movement of the ball, so when Clay finds himself open, even a little bit, it's already over for the other team. And guess what? As we mentioned earlier, Clay is still the same Clay. His 22 points are paired with above 40% shooting from beyond the arc, plus a career high attempt rate at 10.6 threes a game. His minutes are close to what they were again, as are his rebounds and assists. Thompson's been carrying this Warriors team at multiple points this season because of Steph being out with injuries. If a guy was washed or on the decline, would he be able to do that? Golden State isn't high in the standings right now, sure, but they've just cracked fifth in the West at the time of this recording. And to be fair, the other side of Clay's game has been his effectiveness as a two-way player. Has his defense held up over the injuries and aging like his offense has? No, but it hasn't reached the level of making him a total loss for the Warriors. His feats aren't quite as fast, so he does get blown by more than in previous years. But his IQ and ability to always turn himself to another level in the playoffs means we're still scared of seeing him in the postseason. Overall, the media quit on Clay simply too early. The guy is now the first player in NBA history to have two games in a season where he hits 12 threes. 24 threes in two games. For all you math nerds at home that are still trying to figure out the James Harden numbers, I'll save you the time and tell you that that means Clay scored 72 points in two games from purely three-pointers. He's still fast enough to get to his spots. He'll weave through the trees of the Warriors off-ball screens to lose his man. And he still has that smooth shooting stroke that he can get off in the blink of an eye. Don't let the talking heads fool you. Look back at the numbers. How long was Clay even, quote, playing himself back? 
I don't even think we need to have the narrative of Clay's back because he's been here for quite a while now. With all that said, the Warriors are still a team to watch for on where they land in the standings. Thompson has been able to lead this team to victories without Steph, but I wouldn't be shocked to see them battling in the play-in tournament. The franchise has tried to ride two roads at once, develop their young players like Jordan Poole, Jonathan Kaminga, and Moses Moody, while living the contender's life behind their Hall of Fame trio. Last year, it worked. They struggled in the regular season, but finished great and rode all the way to a championship. Something about this season, though, seems different. But we want to hear what you guys think in the comments. And actually, on two things. How far do you think the Warriors will go in the postseason? And how long will Clay stay, quote, back? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.